There's a helicopter over a barge. The helicopter going right by the camera? What the heck? I just love the silence, the small sounds of whistling, and then all of the lights in the entire river area turn on. Like the amount of lights they had for this. Wow. Okay, can we talk about what the frick just happened? One thing I really want to point out, which seems pretty subtle, but because we started the first scene on this entire barge, when we cut into the next scene, it's in a close-up. And the thing that I really love about the fact that he's just walking into this close-up is that at first glance, you can't tell that they're in a new location. That was just an incredibly smooth way to go from scene to scene by just cutting into a close-up as the first shot because you can't tell what the background is. So I just want to point that out. It's like something that you would almost never notice, but it's so smooth. Of course there's gonna be a mirror in the middle of a suburban alley. <laughs> that makes sense. The mirror all of a sudden breaks and we reveal that on the other side of the mirror we have some blue goblin dokabee fire, a British man on a horse, a wedding cake baker, some traditional Korean things, a scientist, and a scuba diver who is just floating there, just floating. <laughs> I wish that we had seen more of the crack here. I was completely confused. I was like, where am I? What is happening? What is going on? And I think that was partially the point, but I didn't understand that there was a mirror and that a mirror broke. I like completely missed that. when you just get blown by a really huge Super Saiyan kick, just, you know, it tends to happen sometimes. So our boys are in a trash sorting facility and he's at the back of a trash can. What do you have to say about that, Franklin? What do you think? He's shy. Well, our boys are in a trash sorting facility at the back of a trash truck. I just love that he's like doing homework. He's like the lo-fi girl just chilling. And then there's a freaking gale force wind that just passes his window. This directing is incredible. Oh, this is also directed by Bang Jae Yub, who is probably the best music video director in K-pop. And I'll tell you why a little bit more later. The effects are so good. Did he just use the force on a plastic bottle? All of the trash sorting or malfunctioning trash machine, I don't think you're supposed to spray trash everywhere in a facility. That's just my thought. But all of this VFX trash that's flying around, it's great because it allows you to do things that you wouldn't normally be able to. For example, freeze time with your hand and then with the force, move a piece of trash in front of the camera to create a transition. The powers. Why was that dance so like cute and fun? It was kind of groovy. Not Felix getting the most replayed with his cute dance. It was swagalicious though, I'm not gonna lie. 
I love that part. <laughs> I get it. Have you ever wanted to go to film school but not been able to? The reality is that not everybody has $100,000 to go to film school or four years to go through the program. And because I was privileged enough to be able to do it, I went through it so you don't have to. And so now I've created a course to teach you everything I learned in film school and all of my years of industry experience for 0.2% of the price in 3% of the time. There were it's a lot cheaper and quicker, essentially. You do not need a degree to break into the film industry. All you need is the skills, and I can teach you that. So if you're trying to be an editor, break into the industry, and you've been saving up, now is the time. If you wanna learn more, go ahead and hit the link in the description. All right, thanks for letting me sponsor my own episode. <laughs> Back to the reaction. Don't be the shiny day and night they wonder how my spotlight is so bright. County stands if you're at better, 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 better. freaking love Stray Kids. It's definitely my favorite K-pop group right now. I'm just gonna say it right now. This is, this is for, yes. We have these boys on a barge. They're taking over the city. We have something bad happening here and that's why there's SWAT people running all over our facility. We all have some trash boys and we have some boys like tripping out, just like tripping balls in an alley. And we return to them here. Everybody still got the scientists, still got the marching band, still got the blue fire goblins. And we realize that the blue fire goblins are kind of tripping our boys out. Like we literally have an over the shoulder goblin shot. <laughs> and he looks into the puddle and like sees himself. And then we cut to the next shot and we see what he's looking at. Stray kids like all the time with the freaking like tilting shots. Dang J Yub just loves that and he does all their music videos. Right here they duplicated the band. So the band's in the back but they're also split up on the sides here. And the way that they actually made this feel a little bit more realistic is by adding fake camera movement because you wouldn't be able to shoot this realistically with camera movement because it would be all jostled and it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't actually line up. The other reason I really like this shot at this particular point in the song is because you hear the harmonies right there in the chorus for the very first time. That's me. And there's a bunch of them. That's me. That's the first time that you hear those harmonies, and so it makes sense that as we hear more, we see more. Oh, they were under the city. So it seems like this whole cave scene happened underneath the city. And we know that because we get this overhead shot and it turns into a whole transition. <laughs> I'm trying not to make this sound wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we see these beautiful gems and we fly through this hole through the puddle, which magically the water does not fall through the hole for some reason. And we get to transition back to the streets. Lots of times people think that the editors create all the transitions, but it really is the director, Bang Jae-yub, coming up with it in his mind, saying, okay, these two shots are gonna go together in the edit, and then actually sending those two clips to a visual effects artist to solely work on that transition. Like, every single edit is so thought out with Bae Jae-yub. Not the lighting cues, okay. When we enter the scene, everything's dark. There's no lights on. Right, right here, we have a lighting cue right on those Brahms. And then this right here, I think is, this is actually a drone with sparks flying off of it. In the song, they're talking about stars a lot. They're talking about being a star. And I think this might be like a, a shooting star going up. <laughs> No, no, they did not. I forgot to push my drawer in. So sorry about the untidiness of my room. I greatly apologize. <laughs> Bang Jae is using a lot of these security camera angles all the time in this music video, and it's really interesting. But literally piece by piece, almost like, you know, one of those pop-up books when you fold the page and it, it pops up at you. He's literally erecting... <laughs> different word. He's literally bringing up a wall. <laughs> So he must have filmed a plate to get all of this done. So he freeze frames one section of the video and then this little tiny bit right here 
including the shadow, is unfreeze framed. So he starts dancing and then they add a nice little camera zoom, which is a little motivation to have everybody else start dancing. That is crazy cool. Dude, and then this transition. It's a similar idea where piece by piece things are put in. In reality, they filmed the background and that was one shot. And then they filmed another shot and the boys are in front of a green screen doing their entire dance. That way, once they run towards the camera, you can piece by piece replace the background. And all that's left is our boy dancing in front of the scene. And then the camera pulls back and we realize that everything that they were replacing with, even though it still looked like the screen, it was actually a miniature set emulating the real life alleyway. Oh my gosh. Bang j -Yub, you're going too hard with the transitions. Green screen shot. Allows them to replace the background, and then it's a miniature set. And obviously they're dancing <laughs> under a, a car, which would terrify me. Dude, what is it with freaking K-pop videos now and just shooting sideways? Are they like repurposing stuff for vertical content? I don't know. Okay, so the garbage truck is getting chased by some cars. Maybe they're using it as a getaway car. I don't know. <laughs> Not this like background actor just on the day, just like running. It's like, okay, bro, you gotta run as fast as you can next to the pool and then just yeet yourself into the pool just as, oh, as far as you can. Just absolutely. <laughs> Look at him. He understood the assignment. Or she. Your transition was insane, bruh. In this course, the beginning of it is EQ'd and filtered out, so it sounds like it's kind of coming from a radio. It's not quite as big. So we stay on one shot. We save the energy. We make sure that like it kind of feels lame. It doesn't feel as cool, kind of like the song does. Like it's a little subdued. And then we do the fire transition and go to the fire shot when the song is full bore and the visuals are full bore to match that energy. They had a fire element in After Effects, mapped it to a person that they rotoscoped out, three people rather, then used the same transition to add the background. So it's just foreground first, then background. And then they do another burn transition on the bling bling. All these transitions are extremely motivated. So whatever element is a part of the next scene or the previous scene. They use that element in the transition to make it make sense. So in this instance, we used fire transitions. When we went into the cave, we transitioned through a hole and we even used a folding transition to emulate the model of the alleyway. Mm. Ooh, they're doing the red lighting cues again. That was nice. It was very, it was very much the same. Bro, what is with the floating cars? Here's something that I really love about Bang J Yub. He storyboards out his entire music video. So he knows how the whole thing goes frame by frame before he even shoots it. And because of that, he's able to add in all kinds of little elements that you normally wouldn't think of to help the scenes blend together. So it's more than just editing. It's set design, it's colors. If you just give random footage to an editor, they're not gonna be able to create something that cool if it wasn't pre thought out before it was shot. And that's why Bang J Yub is so good. <laughs> It's so good. We're special. Yeah. I've been sick, so I gotta go spit some phlegm out of my mouth. Sorry. Lots of lighting cues in this music video, which means that at a certain time, the lighting situation dramatically changes. So right here, major lighting cue. And again, we have that bullet time effect where everything freezes. All of the VFX, all the flying things freeze, time freezes. It's, you know, they're magicians, they're amazing. I can't freaking believe it. And then we have an amazing zoom transition where we start to zoom in, boom, right 
here, we have a new shot. Might be three shots even. It just looks like a seamless boom, crazy camera movement. Bang Jay Yob is like literally not even using the bolt camera rig in this music video. I am so proud of him. Don't get me wrong, I love the Bolt camera rig, but we've been doing it for like three or four years now at this point, and we're kind of beating a dead horse. And now we're doing something new. We're doing more creative transitions that don't require that crutch of a camera rig. That's freaking sick. Go off, Bang Yo. he's evolving. He's becoming even better than he was before. Oh my god. The SWAT team was for a giant octopus. <laughs> Sorry, I have to pause. I just said octopus. The editing rhythm here is really nice. What did that mean? You're fighting an octopus and it transitions to a uh, pool class. Are they saying that like this is stray kids, the octopus is stray kids, they're letting stray kids loose and everybody else is trying to restrict them, but they cannot be contained. And maybe it's like, oh look, we're not contained. I don't know, I don't know what it means. <laughs> Dude, the fire scene is so cool. Oh my god. That is the sickest breakdown I've ever seen. What? When you cut to silence while having something crazy happen on screen, it works so well. It works almost every time because silence is contrast. We're used to noise, we're used to music, we're used to loud. And when something crazy happens on screen, which is also contrast, and then silence, there's so much focus. The most amount of focus happens when there's silence and something crazy happen on screen. Match cuts. And then they reverse the shot and our boy pulls out a freaking grappling hook. I'm in full conflict. This is crazy. It just works so well with the music. Like if you just break it down visually, it's like, oh yeah, it's kind of cool. He pulled the camera and match cut. But when you listen to it and watch it in real time, it's crazy. <laughs> Like the sound effect of, of him pulling the And then this too, they do freaking practical fireworks where the entire city blows up. The budget is budgeting. I think I need to redo the uh, most expensive K-pop videos. This one wins. <laughs> Not the octopus flying. And that's a nice motivated water transition. This floating freaking water droplets. Oh my gosh. Oh. Jesus loves you. I love you guys. He's this big now. Now look, look over there. Okay. 